Are you looking for a large breed to add to your family dynamics? In today's video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the differences between the Master of Scent, the Bloodhound, and the Gentle Giant, the Great Dane. Welcome back to the Fenrir Bloodhound Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high-level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. So let's dive into today's video where we'll be comparing these two huge breeds. Let's begin today by touching on some of the history of the Bloodhound. Once known as the Sleuth Hound, this breed can be traced back to the 1300s. They first appeared in British writing in the mid 14th century when the Earl of Hereford, Sir Humphrey de Bohon, wrote about them in his poem, William of Pellain. Despite being first mentioned in British texts in the 14th century, it's believed they first appeared much earlier, with their ancestors coming from French hounds bred by the monks of the St Hubert Abbey. They were originally bred to track and hunt large game, and at the time, even humans. They needed an excellent sense of smell to carry out some of the work, especially when finding animals that had evaded the hunt. It's believed this is how they got the name Bloodhound, as they would follow the scent of blood from wounded animals to track them down. Another theory about their name is that they got it from the first breeder's dedication to ensuring the breed's bloodline stayed pure. Next, let's take a look at the history of the Great Dane. Drawing of dogs that closely resemble the Great Dane have been found on Egyptian artefacts dating back to 3000 BC, as well as Babylonian temples built around 2000 BC. There's also writings of such dogs in Chinese literature. It's believed that these dogs were bred with the ancestors of the English Mastiff, the Irish Wolfhound, and possibly the Irish Greyhound to create the Great Dane we're more familiar with today. They've had a few different names over the years. They were originally bred to hunt boars and went by the name of Boarhound. In the 17th century, they were kept by German nobles and referred to them as Kammerhunds or chamber dogs. The name Great Dane came about in the 18th century. It's said to have happened after a French naturalist travelled to Denmark and saw a version of the Boarhound that was slimmer and more greyhound-like in its appearance. He called this dog the Great Danoy, which eventually became the Great Danish dog. The name stuck even though the breed wasn't developed in Denmark. Despite the name Great Dane being around since the 1700s, they were not known as the Great Dane everywhere. Many breed historians credit German breeders for refining the breed to the standard we're familiar with today. Originally, they had aggressive temperaments as they were bred to hunt boar. The German breeders were successful in their attempts to produce a more gentle animal. In 1880, a group of breeders and judges met in Berlin and agreed that since the dogs they were breeding were far more superior and distinctive to their English Mastiff ancestors, they would name them the Dutch Dog. The name Dutch Dog is used in many European countries, but it wasn't accepted by English-speaking countries or by Italy. The English-speaking countries stuck with the name Great Dane, and in Italy they're known as the Alano, which means Mastiff. Bloodhounds are certainly an iconic breed. They have many standout and defining features, including a long face, wrinkles, and long, large ears. Bloodhounds actually have uses for these long ears and wrinkles. Their large ears work as a barrier to stop wind from blowing away any DNA whilst they have their noses to the ground. The wrinkles that are located under their jaws and neck are known as the shawl. These wrinkles actually store scent particles, which means that a bloodhound can refresh the scent that they're following so they never forget the scent. This is how bloodhounds can track a scent for days. Their wrinkles do need looking after as part of their grooming needs. They should be bathed regularly to prevent the build-up of dirt and to stop infections. They don't require much of the grooming to keep their dense, short coat looking clean. In fact, brushing them once a week is sufficient. Their coat comes in many accepted colours, including black and tan, liver and tan, and red and liver. They're a large breed standing up to a height of 27 inches or 68 centimetres at the wither and weigh up to 110 pounds or 50 kilograms. Females tend to be a little smaller, standing at a height of 25 inches or 63 centimetres and weighing up to 100 pounds or 45 kilograms. The Great Dane is a tall, lean but muscular breed. They're a short-coated breed and their coat is smooth and lies close to their body, giving them a shaved appearance. This short, single coat is easy to groom, but they still shed throughout the year. 
Their coats come in a variety of different colours, including fawn, black, blue, brindle, harlequin, mantle, and mill. These colours are all accepted by the Kennel Club as show standard, but there are other colours and variations that are common amongst Great Danes that won't have any health issues, but won't be accepted colours in the show ring. Only albino Great Danes suffer a high likelihood of issues. They're well known for their muscular and athletic form. A healthy Great Dane should be well defined and visible, muscles can even be seen from a distance. Unfortunately, the Great Dane's physique plays a part in their long-term health. The heart muscle tends to grow weaker the older they get. This, coupled with their large frame and weight, is a contributing factor towards cardiomyopathy and in turn a shorter life expectancy compared to smaller breeds. Obviously, the standout features of the Great Dane's appearance is its sheer size. One of the largest breeds around, the males can grow up to 36 inches or 91 centimetres and weigh up to an eye-watering 200 pounds or 90 kilograms. Females are a little smaller, standing at 30 inches or 76 centimetres and weighing up to 140 pounds or 63 kilograms. Bloodhounds are an independent, active breed. They require at least two hours of exercise every day. They do best when they're given a job to do and they certainly thrive with scent training. Bloodhounds need an owner who will be calm yet consistent as this breed likes to take the lead. If not trained properly from an early age they can become stubborn and the best approach for training is positive reinforcement, persistence and plenty of rewards. Bloodhounds don't deal well with owners who are impatient or who can't remain calm as they're quite sensitive breed themselves. An obedience training should be started the day you bring your new bloodhound home. It's also a good start to practice recall from a young age, as once a bloodhound gets the scent of something, it will be difficult to get their attention back on you. A perfect recall is essential, as this breed does have a high prey drive. A properly trained bloodhound will certainly be worth the time and effort, and they'll be a joy to work with or have around the home. Bloodhounds who are well trained make amazing working dogs. Many have been used as police dogs, drug detection dogs, search and rescue dogs and cadaver dogs. Due to their sheer size it's vital anyone who decides to get a Great Dane is prepared to spend plenty of time properly training it. They do have a naturally friendly temperament and love to please their owners but it's important for you to have control over them at all times. Untrained dogs of any breed can be dangerous, but a dog the size of a Great Dane could be lethal if left to become aggressive. Fortunately, they are naturally sweet-natured, gentle and affectionate and easy to train. They need a good walk every day and anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour is sufficient for a, an adult dog. Although they are relatively quiet indoors, they do need a large space and are not suited to apartment living. Obedience training and manners is essential. As we've said, they're keen to please their owners, so you should find it relatively straightforward. But if you don't spend time with them from an early age, they can become really difficult to control when they reach adulthood because of their size and weight. They're not a particularly vocal dog, but they do have a powerful bark and won't hesitate to use it when they feel the need to defend their family. However, at their core, they are people orientated. They will demand your attention by nudging you with their heads to get fuss and affection or even try hopping on your lap for a cuddle. The Bloodhound is a placid breed and usually get along well with children. However, they are a large breed and the potential for accident and injury by knocking over little ones is always there. So keep interactions between them supervised. Bloodhounds were bred to hunt in packs, so usually get along well with other dogs, but they can have issues with dogs of the same sex. Due to their history of tracking and hunting, they do have a high prey drive and don't always get along well with other animals. If well socialised from a young age, they can live alongside them, but it's always wise to show caution when leaving them alone together. As we've already touched upon, the Great Dane is a massive dog with an even bigger heart. They love their owners and they want to play and are relaxed around children. A well-trained and socialised Great Dane is happy to welcome visitors unless they think you need defending. They will generally be great with children, however, they don't really realise how big they are, and as we've mentioned, they sometimes think they are lap dogs. This is something to contemplate when they're around smaller children. They can easily knock little ones over if play gets too boisterous, and this can easily lead to injury. As with any breed, it's important to teach your children how to approach them and leave them alone if sleeping or eating. Widely speaking, Great Danes get along well with other pets in the house, especially if they've grown up with them. They're happy to curl up and snooze with other dogs or cats, but of course this isn't a general rule, and some won't tolerate other pets. 
The Bloodhound and the Great Dane are two of the most instantly recognisable and iconic breeds around. They are two of the larger breeds available, yet despite their size, they're both relatively placid breeds who are well suited to family life. Either breed will make a fine choice and certainly turn heads when out on a walk in the neighbourhood. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down in the comments section below. And don't forget if you are new here to make sure you subscribe. We have three dedicated Bloodhound videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Bloodhound Show.